Hello, and welcome to the second part of this tutorial series. As we saw in the last video we made the player movement. Well today we are gonna go on to the color changing method. So let's get coding. So now we are going to create an ARM script. Then open it up in VS Code. This script helps to change the color of our ARM. Now we need to get a reference to the sprite renderer of our arm. And also outline which colors we want our player's arm to change to. So for this tutorial we will use green, blue, red, and yellow as our target colors. So we will create color variables and give them these names and back in Unity, we will define this colors with the color picker in the inspector, for now these variable names do not determine the actual color of our color variable. Make sure to make these variables public so as we could change their values in the inspector or you could make them private and allow the debug mode in the inspector. Now that we have a reference to the sprite renderer of our arm, we can now tweak its color with our color variables. But to remind you, you can also change the color of a sprite renderer without color variables. For example let's say a sprite renderer sr. You could change its color by typing in sr.color equals color.blue. But I do not recommend that since it gives you definite colors. But if you need a light blue, when you create a public color variable. You could change its RGB and alpha value easily in the inspector with the color picker which makes it much better. Alright now we are gonna make some if statements inside the update function which will check our specific input. And by specifying which input we want from the player we will let the if statements check the player input so as to perform the color changing function. So for example we want when the player press the G key. We want the sprite renderer to change its color to let's say green. We will type if input.getKeyDown, keycode.g then specify the function to be done if the statement conditions are met. Well in our case is to change the color of the sprite renderer. So we will type sr.color equals green. In this case the green color variable in this tutorial will be set to green later on. Now that we have finished the boring stuff let's go back in Unity and tweak some variables so as we can see how our code will turn out. So we will select all our ARM game object and add the ARM script to them. Then set their public color variables in the script at the same time so as we don't have different color value for the same variable in different ARMs. So let us hit play. Shall we? Cool. Now we can change the color of our arm. Whenever we hit G, the color changes to green and when we hit R, it changes to red and when we hit Y and V, the arm will change to yellow and blue respectively.
Now let's head to the second part of this tutorial. Now we want an obstacle in our scene, which we will use the built-in circle sprite in Unity. For now the obstacle is stationary, we will add more to it in the third episode of this series. For now, we want the obstacle to start with a random color whenever it is instantiated or activated. So let's create an obstacle script, and open it up in Visual Studio Code. Basically we want to do the same thing like in our ARM script. Yes, we want to reference the sprite renderer of the obstacle and also create color variables which will be used to change the color of the obstacle. So since we want the obstacle to have a random starting color, we might as well use the start function. So we are going to create an integer called random in the start function, and in the beginning it will have a value between 0 and 3. But to do this we will type random equals random dot range, 0 comma 4. Well don't be confused, this random dot range method works like index that is the first value of our integer will be 0, then the second one, then the third two, and the fourth three. Although we write it as range 0 comma 4. So the main idea is that we want to check in the beginning if random equals 0, then maybe we want to change the obstacle's color to blue. But instead of writing a lot of if statements, we could use a good C-sharp method called switch. This switch method helps to loop between different values of a variable, let's say our random variable. We could use switch to check for its different values and do something. Let's say when random equals zero we want to debug.log, hello, we will type inside the switch method, case zero, then inside here you write the function you want to run, for example debug.log, hello, then you close the case by typing break, you will have to close each case by break, or you might get errors. So basically, if you want to check if random equals to a certain value, you write case then in front of the case keyword you type your condition. So now we want to check, if random equals 1, we want to change the color of the obstacle to green, and when it is 2, we want to change its color to yellow. And when it is 3 change its color to blue, and when it is zero change its color to red. Okay, now that we are done let's head back to Unity and test these lines of code. Let's, let's drag the obstacle script to our obstacle game object, then adjust the color variables then hit play. As you can see whenever the game starts the obstacle will have a random color to start with. And as that being said, I would like to wrap this second part, make sure to stay tuned so as to get more good contents. Please subscribe and hit like if you liked this video and hit dislike if you did not. Keep Gaming Gamers